What is going on you guys and welcome back to another exciting video. In today's video we are making that floating text image uh, skewed look type which you might have seen in the latest video that I uploaded as well which was about LumaFusion's 10 brand new features which is coming this year. Now more info about that is in that video down in the description so if you haven't seen it already click on that to see all the features which are coming. Amongst those are speed ramping and easy ease keyframes. Now to pull off this skew effect what I used was Affinity Photo. You can do this with any other application which allows you to skew an image uh, as well. So if you don't have Affinity Photo feel free to use any other application. And if this is the first time that you are here thank you for stopping by. Make sure to hit that subscribe button that would be really appreciated. Now without further ado let's head over to the iPad so we can create this amazing floating skewed uh, animation in Luma Fusion. <laughs> So now that we moved over to the iPad, we're going to go straight over to Affinity Photo. Now, like I said, if you don't have Affinity Photo, you can use any other application which can skew images as well. So what we're going to do is to open up Affinity Photo. Then we're going to go to the plus, which is on the top right corner. We're going to tap on that and then choose import from photos. Once we tapped on import from photos, we're going to go over and find the photo that we want to skew. Now, this is an image that I took a screenshot of uh, from Luma Touch's uh, Instagram. And this is what I used in the floating uh, box on the previous videos I uploaded as well. Now, uh, a trick here is to, uh, or what I did was to actually use the same image here. And then I just cropped out the different parts here at a time uh, to speed up my uh, workflow and to make the steps uh, uh, a little bit shorter. So what I did was to have this image here and I went over to the cropping tool and I cropped in the parts I wanted to keep. So the first image was looking like this. So here I only, only wanted the multicam uh, sync to be visible. Then I tapped on apply and then I saved this as um, a photo. So just save it as a PNG file and then it will be transparent as well if it's not filling out the uh, background. But since this is filling out the background, I'm just keeping it like this for now because we're going to do the adjustments later. Now, once uh, I saved the first photo here, I went over to the cropping tool again and then I simply just stretched the bottom here down to reveal more of the uh, text here. And once I've revealed more of the text, I went over to the cropping again and then I just cropped in the next part I wanted to add, which was edit directly from an external drive then apply and then I save this as an image and the, the last two images as well same over to cropping and stretch it down just to reveal more and then cropping again and then I just cropped in with the scope so now I have multicam and then external drive and then scopes apply save this as a new image and then I took the last part again which was an exciting summer so over to cropping and then uh, the last part here and apply. So now after saving those, I had four different images. So once we've done this, we're gonna stay inside of Affinity Photo, but now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna open up a new project by tapping on the plus on the top right corner. And we're gonna go to import from photos again, go to recents, and here we're gonna find the different photos that we want to use. So that will be this, 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 and this, since we have four photos. So what I did was to start with this one, which only had the multicam sync. And now since this has been saved as a new image, it's easier to customize as well. So next thing is to go over to filters, which is the button right here. Then we're gonna go down until we find perspective. And we're going to tap on perspective here and I'm going to leave the two left uh, dots here in place because I'm not going to do anything with those. Uh, but if you want it to be the opposite way, you can use um, the uh, left dots here and just drag those to the uh, uh, right side and you can skew it the other way or you can skew it as you want. So if you want something that looks like this, it's all up to you how you want to skew different things. Now. The way that I did it with this was to keep those two in place and I simply dragged over the uh, bottom right one and the top right one and I made a tiny skew to it, something like this. 
Now, once this was done, simply tapped on apply. So the next step is to go over and export this as a new PNG image. So just gonna leave all the settings as they are, tap on share and then save image. Now, once this is done, we can move over to uh, Luma Fusion here and uh, we have an image prepared already and going over to source photos and it might not appear here on the top left corner. So you might go over to photos and then just recently added and you should be able to see it somewhere here. I think it's a little bit further here. Here we have it. So we're going to drag this over to the timeline here. And uh, you can see that we have the skew to the image as well. Next step is to go into edit and over to frame and fit. And you can now scale down the image and place it wherever you want. Now, the way that I use the keyframing to make it a bounce was to simply go 15 frames at a time. So I made a keyframe here at the beginning and uh, I just kept the position Y to zero uh, and um, I moved 15 frames and then I just changed the position Y to minus one and I made 15 more frames and then I changed it to plus one and then 15 more frames and minus one again because this is creating just a subtle uh, bounce to it so nothing much added and then another 15 frames and we're gonna go over to uh, one again, plus one, and then minus one, and then plus one, and so on. So now we will have something that looks like this. So now we've basically done all the steps for the skewing part and the animation part, but we can also spice this up and make it even smoother. Now you can also go 10 frames uh, if you want to have a little bit more movement to it. You can go 15 as we did here and you can add the position Y from instead of doing one, you can do two. Uh, so plus two and then minus two. And once this is done, uh, we can actually just copy this layer here, just copy. And then we can open up a new project. And if we take a look at this, this is now 30 frames per second. But if we change this to, uh, let's see here to 24 and duplicate. And then we have a 24 frame timeline here right now. Uh, and since we already copied this, we're gonna go over to uh, projects and we're gonna create a new. And this one we're gonna create with 30 frames and we can keep it to landscape as well. And we're gonna go on and paste this clip. So now we have the clip here with the animation as well at 30 frames. So we can see that this is now bouncing up and down. And we're gonna go over and we're gonna render this to make it um, a separate movie file so it's easier to work with. So we're gonna go over to photos and we're gonna apply the settings of the video codec with the AGVC with transparency and we're gonna go over and choose 1080p and the video quality to extreme. So once the render is complete, we can go out to the project, we can delete the project right here, and we're gonna go over to our current project, which is now 23.98 FPS. So if we take the latest rendered file here and place on the timeline, and now we can see that this has the same animation to it, but it's a little bit rough when it hits the top and the bottom. So the way to smoothen this out now, since we still not have uh, the ECE's keyframing, which I also talked about, so if you wanna know everything about the upcoming features, make sure to check out the link uh, to that video in the description below. But for now to smoothen this out, since this is rendered in 30 FPS and the timeline is uh, 23.98, we're gonna go over to edit, over to speed and reverse, and we're gonna adjust the speed to the knobs which you see here. This is uh, to match the uh, project timeline as well and the 23.98 FPS. So if we now do a playback, you can see it's a little bit smoother when it hits the top and the bottom and you have that floating motion to the animation box. So now that we've done this, we can delete the first part here because we don't need it anymore. And uh, since this is now complete, we can duplicate this one time first and then we're gonna go to the bottom one and we're gonna go into edit we're gonna go over to frame and fit and we're simply gonna scale this up a tiny bit here and make sure it's placed properly behind the first image. 
Now, once we've done that, we're going to go over to color and effects over to the water droplet and we're going to add a Gaussian 10. You can also customize this depending on the blur that you want to have around the image here, but we're going to keep it around, let's see, five or six. And then we're going to go over to the color preset, going to add an original. And this is only if you want to have uh, um, some colors in the background as well to make it um, a little bit different and not just a, a simple floating uh, text box or animation. You can also keep it like this to only have the blurred uh, uh, edge around the box itself, which is looking pretty, pretty nice as well. But if you want to add some colors to it and spice it up, maybe some RGB or different colors, then add an original color preset here. And we're going to go down to the RGB panel, the red, green and blue. You can also change the color with the hue here if you want to do that. Uh, we're going to keep it as yellow and once this is done, I'm simply going to drag these up a couple of layers. Uh, we're going to go to the bottom here. We're going to duplicate that one more time into edit on this over to the original color preset here. And we're going to change this from uh, yellow over to uh, red. We can also go over to tint and play around with the tint here if that's easier. Uh, so let's just keep it like that and we can actually go over and we can do the same with the bottom one So it's a little bit harder on the color here I'm gonna duplicate this one more time here and we're gonna go over and we're gonna make this a Blue so reset that and we're gonna go over and change this to blue so now we have the RGB colors here and now we can move over to uh, frame and fit again and we can adjust this as we want. So we, if we want it to be a little bit more to the left and we can go over to the next one and we can take this a little bit more to the right and we can choose blending mode screen to blend them together and um, make that RGB effect pop. It all depends on the look that you're after and this is uh, something that you can play around with as well. So let's go over here and add screen. So now you have a, a subtle uh, RGB effect to it and you can change the placement of, of them a little bit better. If you want it to pop a little bit more, I can see that the blue is a little bit off now. Uh, so we might get that in here as well to something like that. So here you have an RGB look to the uh, uh, floating animation as well. Now what's cool about this is that you can also offset it by changing the placement of everything which is underneath there. And you can see that you can get the uh, RGB behind the box here. The red, green, blue is, is uh, offset a little bit. So it's coming in a little bit later and it creates a nice look to it as well. So if this is something that you want, you can go to the beginning of the uh, the one which is offset the most and you can make cuts to the others here like this and we're going to go on and we're going to delete these and we're going to do the same thing with the bottom here. So go to the one which is uh, furthest towards the middle here, which is the top one here and we're going to make cuts to the ones in the bottom and delete those. So now we have only this one coming in here. So to add some effects to this to make it easy for yourself, we're going to multi-select all of them and we're going to make sure that we copy, go over and create a new uh, project here. But this time we have to make it 30 because the animation is 30 as well and landscape. And we're going to paste this. And now we're going to do a render of this. So we're going to go over to movie photos and then the same settings with HVC with transparency and the extreme 40 megabits per second. Now, once this is rendered, we can go over and we can delete the project as well because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to go down until we find the 23.98 timeline here. And you can also delete these now because we don't need them. And we're going to go over to the latest uh, rendered file here and we're going to take that, drag it over to the timeline here 
And if we scrub through now, you can see that we have the same animation. Now, if you want it now to be bigger or smaller, you can go into edit and you can scale it up or you can scale it in and you can place it now wherever you want to, to have a, a smoother and better editing experience with an animation created like this. Another thing to make some effects, if you want it to come in, you can now keyframe this or you can add your own custom effects as well. So what I'm gonna do is to make a cut here at the beginning and I'm gonna make a cut here at the end as well and I'm gonna select the first part go over to the effects panel here and I'm gonna see if I find one of my effects here this one whip right in and that uh, this one is coming in right here and we're gonna add the same one on the other side here so this is gonna be whip right out and if we do a playback of the first part here you can see it's coming in and if we go to the end you can see that the effect is going out now here is also a tip if you see that the animation maybe it's it's not smooth enough you want it to be or you want it to go faster um, then you can select the clip you can copy the keyframes and everything and then you can resize it make it smaller or larger and then you can just paste all the different effects again so now we will have this going a little bit faster we can do that same with the first part as well. If it's a little bit too slow or a little bit too fast, we can copy the keyframes and then we can trim it in here and we can apply all the keyframes again. So now we will have the animation going a little bit faster. So there you have the way that I skew my images for my Luma Fusion videos. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of today's tutorial. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And also leave a, a like down for the algorithm as well. And with that said, that's the end of today's video. And I see you in the next one.